hello lovelies, these are my predictions for AQA Chemistry Paper 1 for 2023. Now, to go with the predictions that I've done for you this year, we've got video walkthroughs of all of the papers. So biology, chemistry, physics, math. They are all linked in the playlist that is in, all linked in the description down below. So once you finish making notes from this video, you can go and watch that video where I take you through not only what sort of questions do I think are going to come up, but how to answer them as well. So how to structure your answer, looking for clues the examiners are leaving you. Now, if you are stuck with where to revise, if you are stuck with what topics to cover, this is my suggested list. But please remember, I am not an examiner. I am not affiliated with any exam board, so please revise absolutely everything. But first of all, I'm going to take you through the combined science topics, and then I'm going to take you through the separate science topics. So you can jump to that section if you're doing separate science. But if you're doing combined science and you want a list of topics to start on, this is where I and Grumpy Old Prem here suggest that you start. This is chemistry and one of the massive, massive big topics that you cannot get away from is structure of the atom, obviously. So how can you go from looking at the periodic table to being able to draw the structure of an atom? So all those numbers on the periodic table, the mass number, the atomic number, can you look at those and work out how many protons there are, how many neutrons there are, how many electrons there are, and where they should all actually be? And then draw the atoms and the ions that come from it. Ouch! So then we need to look at the model of the atom. Who discovered what, where, when? How do they know where things were? This is a big topic that I fancy, and this is a common topic with physics, so it's really, really worth spending some time revising this well because it could come up a lot. So not only atom structure of the atom, model of the atom, but states of matter as well. This is one of those really, really easy things you probably learn very, very beginning that people tend to forget about because they assume that is easy. But you could get quite a complicated question on this. So a big topic for paper one is the link between structure and function. So if we're looking, a big topic for paper one is the link between structure and properties and then potentially linking through to function as well. So for all of your ionic, your covalent, your giant, your lattice, your carbon structures, I'd like you to know what those uh, structures are. And for your simple covalent, it is really, really worth learning the formula of all of the, the common simple ones. So like water, carbon dioxide, oxygen, uh, nitrogen, ammonia, learning the compounds and the structures involved in those. And then how that structure links through to the properties of things. So the boiling point, whether it can conduct electricity or not, and then taking this further. So we're actually looking at the structure, the properties, the function of carbon compounds. So specifically diamond and graphite, and then we can link further ions into this as well. We know that 20% of your chemistry grade is going to be maths in chemistry. So please spend some time looking at how to balance equations. Now I know this can be scary, but honestly, 95, 99% of the time, when you're balancing equations, the answer's two. So if you've tried and you really, really can't get it, just write in two in the gap and 95% sure that's the answer. Knowing how to draw your structures is really important. So knowing how to draw covalent bonding, knowing how to draw ionic bonding. Now with ionic bonding, you can have lots of examples. So learning a common example that you can apply to lots of different situations is important. But for simple covalent bonding, there's only a limited number of compounds they can ask you about. So um, carbon dioxide is the most complicated one, oxygen gas, nitrogen gas, ammonia, water. Actually spending some time sketching those out properly is really, really worth spending some time revising on. So looking at groups in the periodic table and the reactivity series, how we move down the groups, how we move down the reactivity series, and how the equations, the reactions that they're involved in change with those. Also, another series I'd like you to look at is the pH. So the thing, things about acids, neutralization equation, what is acid, what is alkaline, the difference between strong and weak acids. We know that 15% of your chemistry grade is going to be based on practicals. So please make sure you know all of your practicals really, really well. You're dependent, you're independent. And um, when we go into a practical, um, when we get any practical question in the exam, we know something about this is going to be changed. It's something that's going to be 
different to what you would normally see in class. So please don't expect it just to be repeating the practicals that you did. But one of the things that frequently comes up in papers is just general practical skills. So how can you measure things? How can you make sure this is accurate? But one of the things I would like you to look at is the reactions of um, different gases, testing for gases and electrolysis. Linking in with electrolysis and even with pH is your half equations for various different things. And then the last thing I'd like you to look at is endothermic, exothermic, and I know this came up a lot last year, but just looking at the reaction profiles and the experimental bits that are involved in that. So. That is your starter list for revision for chemistry paper one, but please remember to revise absolutely everything. And if you want some questions based around those topics and want to see me working through how to answer those questions, then they're all linked in the playlist down below. Now, if you're doing separate science, this is my starter list of topics for you. As always with chemistry, you need a really, really secure knowledge of the structure of the atom and the periodic table. So what all of those numbers on the periodic table actually mean, the mass number, the atomic number, any calculations you need to do with those, and how we can go from those numbers and looking at the groups and the periods of the periodic table to actually drawing a structure of the atom. So how do you know how many protons, neutrons, electrons, and where those electrons are? are within an atom. How can you interpret the periodic table and draw something? This is a key thing that comes up every single year. And along with this, it's calculations of mass of various different things and balancing equations. Now, sneaky, sneaky tip for balancing equations. If you've tried your hardest and you can't do it, or if you're running out of time in the exam, just pop down to as the answer. 90 5% of the time at GCSE, this is the answer. And if you're really, really stuck and you really, really can't work it out and the only other option is leaving it blank, just pop down two and then fingers crossed we might get a mark for that. So a big topic that is commonly linked with physics is development of the model of the atom. So how we know what it looks like and the limitations of that model as well. And also states of matter. So the changes between the different um, properties and um, behaviours that we see. Another big, big topic that comes up every single year on paper one is looking at how we can link the, the structure or something through to its properties. So looking at own we're looking at co covalent and giant and lattice things as well. So how can we look at the properties of something and then link it through to what is actually going to be happening, the structure of it, and the bonding that we see within things. So simple covalent, what are the properties of simple covalent, ionic, what are the properties of ionic? And what I want you to do is to really look at this in detail and know your examples of carbon structures and how the bonding within different carbon structures, so within diamond and graphite, actually link through to the properties of it. As well as being able to draw all of your dot and cross diagrams for ionic and covalent. This is something that comes up nearly every single year. For ionic bonding, you can just learn a general example and then practice applying that to different situations. For simple covalent bonding, it is really worth actually just learning what those pictures look like because there aren't so many of them that you need to learn and chances are they are going to come up in some format. So you learn water, oxygen, carbon dioxide, nitrogen gas, uh, oxygen gas, ammonia, um, hydrochloric acid, um, things like that are common ones that come up. So looking at your groups in the periodic table, so not only like group one, halogens, but the transition metals as well. How properties change as we move down groups, and then the common properties you'll be associated with transition metals. I really like pH and acids for this year. So the difference between strong and weak acids, the difference between high and low concentration. Not only the neutralization equation is one that you should be really, really familiar, but all of your salt equations as well. So if we take a metal or a metal oxide and add it to an acid, what do we get out at the ends? And can you actually look at those equations and interpret the ionic formula and actually, you know, work out what's going to come out at the end and give the formula and balance the equation as well? This could be quite a complicated thing that could easily be linked into a practical. So looking at it, here is your practical, what is going to come out at the end? What can you measure about this? What can you change about this? This is a really, really common area to link in lots of practical skills. I'd like you to look at the reactivities and then the equations that are going to 
to come out of that. A few things that can all be lumped together, so electrolysis, testing for gases and half equations as well. There is so much they can ask about this and they can be really big topics with lots of marks. So linking into your half equations, we can have fuel cells as well, which is a really big topic that I fancy for this year, as well as ethanol production. There are lots of ethical things we could have with ethanol production, lots of maths we could have with ethanol production as well. And then the last thing I'd like you to look at, because it's a key thing that comes up so often, is endothermic and exothermic and reaction profiles. Um, so that is my short list of things I'd like you to start your revision with. But please remember to arise absolutely everything. If you want a walkthrough with loads of questions based on this topic, then the video of the predictive paper that I've done for this year is linked down below, as well as biology, physics, and your maths as well. Good luck, guys. I'm going to be here with you every single step of the way. Ouch! This is why in some videos I like explain scratches.